Hi everybody, this is Dr. Kauser, Jonathan Kauser. I will be your instructor for this online course, uh, Roots of Current Global Conflicts. Just like to uh, give you all a short video to give you a chance to see who I am and to welcome you to the course and to draw your attention to a few uh, pieces of information about the course. I'll be posting these from time to time as we go on, uh, recording videos as we go. Um, so hopefully you'll find it uh, useful and give you a bit of a sense of uh, who's in charge of uh, giving you these assignments and doing your grading. I'd like to give you a little bit of background about myself, first of all, so that you have a sense of who I am. I have been teaching for quite a while at a number of different institutions. I've taught at Plymouth State before. I have taught at Southern New Hampshire University, at the University of New Hampshire uh, for the Granite State College system here in New Hampshire. I've also taught outside the state at uh, St. Mary's College uh, in Indiana and also at the University of Notre Dame, which is where I got my degree. So I've been teaching quite a bit. I've taught a very wide variety of courses, everything from ancient history up to modern American history and everything in between. By my own field of specialization, I'm actually a medieval historian. I focus on the early Middle Ages prior to the year 1000 AD. So this course is very far off from my own scholarly specialization, although it does fall within uh, the realm of other kinds of classes I've taught before. Uh, one thing that, that will mean as far as how this class is going to operate, I don't plan on taking an approach here as though I was an expert who is going to lecture to you with all the information that you need to know and I expect you to um, take up all the information that I throw at you. Rather, I'm thinking of this course more as being built around the readings that I've assigned and I'm seeing my role as being more to help guide you through this material uh, to bring a historian's eye uh, which can transcend the particular period of time that a person focuses on to those readings and help you understand them and think about how to analyze them and what to get out of them. And of course also to bring that eye to um, assessing uh, your own work and your written work and helping to bring you along uh, as you make progress on your education. So do be aware of that. You're not be getting, going to be getting piles of lectures or piles of information directly from me. When I do post videos, it's going to be to point out some particular perspective or a bit of information or maybe just some of the mechanics about the course or some feedback on how things are going so far. Um, but it's not going to be a matter of um, you know, me lecturing you about the current global conflicts themselves. We're going to focus on the reading for that. Which brings me to my next point, which is uh, you will notice as you look at the syllabus and as you look at our Moodle page, the course is fairly reading intensive. You're going to be doing a minimum of 50 pages reading each week. Often that number will get up to 100 or even 120, 150 pages per week. Because of that, it is absolutely essential that you plan your time, make sure you are setting aside enough time to read everything that's been assigned to you, and also that you take a strategic approach to your reading. I have posted a document in the general section on Moodle uh, about how to study in history and how to sort of plan your approach to the readings. Make sure you look at that very carefully and get used to this kind of approach. The idea is not to just open up a page one, read through to page 50 or page 100 or whatever, close the book and walk away, but rather to take some time at the beginning to orient yourself to what you're thinking about, to what, why the reading may have been assigned for the class, to scan through the reading ahead of time, to skim through it, to look at the structure of the book, uh, figure out how its chapters are organized, that kind of a thing, and give yourself a sense before you even begin reading in detail about what kinds of things are in there and where all this is going then work through it in detail, look up things as you go, and then also take some time afterwards to sum up, go back and reread uh, particular parts maybe, um, to uh, sort of think about how this reading may tie into other things we've been reading in the semester. So make sure that you do all of that. Planning the time is going to be absolutely essential. It's very easy with these online courses, uh, because we're used to sort of surfing through websites quickly from item to item, to uh, try and put in the minimum amount of time to sort of scan through a reading quickly or not really uh, think of it as something that's going to require hours of working through detailed text. But you really need to set that mentality aside. This course is an opportunity for you to set aside a few hours a week to say you're going to be sitting down in a chair or in your bed or wherever it is you do your best reading and uh, really concentrate on working through large dense amounts of material. Um, that may sound a little scary, large, dense amounts of material, but in a way it's an opportunity. This is a chance for you to develop the skill of working with this kind of intense information so that when you graduate and go out into the world, you can do so with the confidence of a person who's no longer intimidated 
by large, dense um, uh, streams of information coming at you. You can actually understand how to sort through it and work through it and uh, find the information that you need from it. So that's going to be a very important element. Um, now the other thing is, because this is an online course entirely, and because it's an asynchronous course, which means we never are going to all be logged in at the same time, um, Skyping with each other or going into a chat room with the whole class, our equivalent of class discussion is going to be happening on the discussion boards that are posted with each unit in Moodle. Every week as you look, there's a discussion forum going on. I'll be filling in more detailed questions with each of those modules as we work our way through the semester. Um, that is really your classroom. Okay, That is where class discussion happens. That is where you are going to be sharing your ideas, your insights, your questions, your confusion about the readings, and you'll be hearing um, the confusion and the questions and the ideas and interpretations of your classmates. And of course, I will also be in there commenting and guiding things along and uh, suggesting new questions or perhaps drawing your attention to particular things. So look at those discussion boards, get used to how to post on them, get used to how to post replies. Really keep up with them because that is your classroom time. If you think that a face-to-face -face class on campus would probably meet for about three hours a week, plan on spending about three hours a week on those discussion boards, uh, reading other people's entries and also composing your own. That will be very essential. It's an important part of your grade. It's an important part of how we all participate and understand what's going on. Um, I will be checking in on them, as I said. I will be grading your responses. When I do grade them, I'm looking both for quantity. Um, are you posting enough? That is to say, are you posting um, one good large oh, initial post, and are you posting um, lengthy, you know, enough replies, normally at least four per week, uh, to your classmates? I'm also looking for quality in those. Uh, are you engaging with the ideas and the information presented in the readings? Are you engaging with the interpretations and the questions that your classmates present? That is going to be extremely important. When I say engaging with them, what I mean is if your classmate presents a question or an idea, do you take that idea or that question and develop it? Right? So they've proposed an interpretation of something. You could say, yes, that's a good thing, uh, but here's what I think is wrong with it and maybe how we could correct it. Or here's what I think is good about it and that makes me think maybe I can add more to it and take the idea even farther. Okay, That's what you want to do for really good substantive discussion. In some ways we've got a huge opportunity here because although we'll never be talking to each other face to face, the uh, discussion forum format does mean that you can really reply in more depth and everybody gets a chance to talk. We don't have a clock ticking uh, where maybe somebody had a question and doesn't have time to ask it or somebody wanted to contribute an idea but we ran out of time because somebody else was talking. That won't happen here. You get a chance to uh, contribute as much as you want to. Um, so do as much as you can and I will be watching for it and uh, stepping into the forums to uh, coax along. I will not necessarily reply to every single thread that gets opened on the forums. Everybody is required to post their initial response and open the thread and to reply to each other. I won't necessarily reply to every single one as it goes along. I will post a grade. Um, I will pick up a particularly interesting idea or perhaps an idea which I think needs to be uh, perhaps guided back to be a bit more on track as we go along. But do be aware that while I will be active on those boards, I won't necessarily, you know, don't be disappointed if you post a thread and you don't have a reply from me on it. Um, you know, maybe that um, some bigger questions have come up elsewhere and the discussion is kind of gravitating over in that direction. I may even sometimes, um, after somebody has posted um, their initial uh, responses, their initial threads, I may sort of send out an announcement saying, by the way, so-and-so has a really good question. I'd like, you know, everybody possible to, you know, think about that one and maybe uh, post a contribution to it. So I'll be directing things somewhat in that way. Um, one thing about the due dates on the discussion boards, because we have to keep things moving from week to week. Um, there are due dates. Uh, you need to post your initial reply by Thursday of each week, and then you need to post your replies to other people's posts uh, by Sunday, each of those days at midnight, you know, Thursday at midnight, Sunday at midnight, which puts us on a bit of a weekend schedule, so do be prepared for that. Um, look at your own schedule, look at when you plan to get your work done. Um, and uh, set yourself aside some time, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, to get your posting done. Um, if that is a problem for you, maybe you have outside commitments, a job, other classes, um, something like that, uh, family commitments maybe, or whatever it may be, there's nothing wrong with posting early, right? Um, just don't post late. If you want to put up your initial thing on Tuesday or Wednesday, 
and have your other re responses up by Friday uh, before you, um, you know, go off to your job, your weekend job or something like that. That's absolutely fine. Uh, feel free to do that. Okay, so um, no, you always you can always do things early. You don't have to wait till Thursday to post. As a matter of fact, I prefer that you don't. Um, but through the weekend, there should be an ongoing discussion, and then on Monday, I will be doing one final look at all that's been posted and um, you know do the grading and some uh, final replies there and let you know. In the meantime, you should be off and running with the next week's reading and uh, replying by the next uh, Thursday. So uh, be aware that that's what's going on. Uh, finally, the other thing to point out, um, well actually a couple other things to point out, I have created an extra credit opportunity for everybody. There is, excuse me, um, a Roots of Global Conflicts uh, wiki, uh, which is under our general section that should be accessible for everybody to post to. If you're having any technical difficulties with it, I will let me know so I can make sure it's available to everybody. What you want to do there is as you're going through the readings and you find key terms, vocabulary words, maybe it's the name of a place or of an ethnic group or a United Nations agency or just a vocabulary term or an analytical term, anything like that that comes up, um, post it up to the wiki, um, throw it on there. It, if you understand what it means, you could post it up there with a uh, brief sentence or two uh, discussing what it refers to. If it completely confuses you and you have no idea what the writer is talking about, put it up there and maybe somebody else will be able to jump in and reply on it for you. Um, Look in on the wiki from time to time. If you see things that you're able to answer, do so. Uh, that will count for extra credit. Um, that can bump you up a, a good third of a letter grade for um, people who are involved in there on a consistent basis and being helpful. Uh, the reason why that's especially useful is that by the time you get to midterm and then again to final, that will be a study sheet for everybody. Okay, so you're helping yourselves and helping each other uh, do better in the class when it comes time to write your midterm, when it comes time to write your final, because you will have created a list of key terms that everybody can then use to incorporate into their papers, and that ought to be uh, very useful. Uh, finally, uh, the other thing is, let me mention, you will have uh, some assignments, some writing assignments here uh, that you will be uploading uh, for me to take a look at and uh, to sort of express your ideas in there. One thing in particular I want to point out about those assignments is that the midterm and the final are not going to be your typical multiple choice or short answer. Uh, kinds of exams, the way you might have a blue book exam or a multiple choice quiz um, in a class, those will not be happening. Rather, they will be very broad. I will give you a few uh, prompts on broad themes that have come up over the semester so far, and what I'm testing for is your ability to look at the broad theme and identify what specific detailed information belongs with that broad theme. Okay, in other words, what specific information can you bring forward? from your own learning over the semester so far in order to give a good, concrete, detailed, thorough response to what that broad theme is all about. Okay, so uh, do be aware of that as you're going along. You're not going to be getting rapid multiple choice quizzes or frequent things like that. Um, you'll be posting on the discussion boards a lot and then um, building up your vocabulary and your set of concepts to reply to uh, those broad midterm and final questions. Each of those you'll have a week to work on. They're a completely open book. You can use the wiki, you can use whatever. The key here is not memorization. The key is analysis, right? Your ability to recognize here are the kinds of terms I ought to be looking at and to find those without cutting and pasting something off of Wikipedia, which will probably result in, in a failing grade and we don't want that to happen. Okay, um, there'll be more of these videos coming along to sort of guide you through the course as you go. Uh, but I hope you enjoy the course. I hope you learn a lot. I hope that you find it's very useful uh, as you're watching the news uh, come up and about events going on in Syria, events with terrorism, events going on with China and Asia, things like that, to start thinking about, okay, what are some, um, how can you understand in more depth uh, the kinds of conflicts that are arising in the news um, grabbing our attention from around the world. So thank you very much. I look forward to hearing from you all. Um, and of course, by the way, please feel free to shoot me an email anytime. I will do my utmost to reply to all of those emails within 24 hours. If you don't get a response within 24 hours, please send me a gentle, polite reminder and I will make sure to get back immediately um, to that. But I don't want anybody to feel like they're not able to communicate with me. So uh, if for some reason your email gets buried in a stack of them and I don't reply to it rapidly, uh, please do remind me that you sent me a question and you'd like to hear a response on it. Um, that'll do it for now. I will be, uh, like I say, posting more later on. But in the meantime, uh, Get yourselves reading, get yourselves posting, and I'll look forward to seeing what everybody has to say. Thanks very much.